Good morning, happy people, and welcome to this time of worship online. Yay! We are online again. But there is a few people here with me. It's just not me and Clark, but there's Tom and Kathleen, and then our tech team, there's Dev and Ross. And so brought to you by um, WWWC, um, (laughs) we are bringing live worship to you um, on your internet. So... Glad to be here, sad that you're not, but uh, hopefully this is not a long-lived shutdown, not like the last few times, but short-lived. We'll see how things go. For announcements, uh, postponed is the M&P meeting, the pastoral care meeting, uh, still going on is the council meeting, but that'll be happening by Zoom um, this Sunday. Uh, I mean, this Tuesday, sorry, not Sunday council, Tuesday. Also, uh, for those of you uh, that would like to join a Zoom gathering after church at 1130, um, we welcome you to, there's the Zoom uh, link was in your announcements. I came to you by email. If you don't have it, just email me and I will try to send it out to you as soon as I get out of here and over to the Zoom gathering. If you don't have anything to do on this lovely day, which is nice and warm and mushy, uh, the, the World Religious Day uh, is happening with the theme of Our House on the Prairies, and that went out in your announcements, and there is, uh, uh, you have to send a request to join in on that, and I think it's to the Regina Multifaith at gmail.com, and that's also in your announcements. Um, you'll notice that Regina Native Out Ministry is doing a new project. Uh, they have had this for a long, long, long time. But they're looking for items to basically make a baby layette for fo- folks in their community that have just recently had a child. Instead of everybody going out and buying this or that um, and trying to get it to them, if you buy something for the layette, which is, uh, you'll see all the items in your announcements, just drop it off at the church here and we'll put them together as we can. And if you uh, really want to um, engage in, the, in the, um, the, inter- the week for prayer of Christians unity, you can see that there's an eight-day online Bible study series, and that also is... Um, Uh, thing where you have to register, so please go to that. Reflection on these relationships have led us to engage in a journey towards reconciliation that includes a reminder and acknowledgement of the land on which we reside and on which we worship. This is the traditional land of the people of Treaty 4, both our Indigenous and Métis brothers and sisters, as well as ourselves, who shared with us through the signing of a treaty that outline rights and responsibilities for the people who live here. We acknowledge with respect this land, and we covenant to live as treaty people with the responsibilities that come with that promise. Let us join together in the responsive call to worship. We are gathered together because we want to worship God. Bad times. We confess to God for the moments we have been unfaithful. To listen for God's word in our lives and our life together. To lift up those concerns close to our hearts. We of Christ. May God find welcome, a welcome home among us. Let us join in singing our first hymn, I Am the Light of the World.
Friends, join me in prayer. As the dawn breaks forth in the darkness of the early morning, we offer our praise and thanksgiving to you, our God, for being there in every moment of our breathing and beyond. Through our words, music, and reflection, may we give glory to your name, the one who is a source of all creation, who blessed and continues to bless each and every living thing. Amen.
everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about gifts, but not the kind we get at Christmas or birthdays. Today we're talking about gifts from God. In one of today's Bible readings, it says that each person is given a gift by the Spirit for the common good, which essentially means that each, is a, each of us is given a skill or ability or a passion that is great for us, but is also great for the other people in our communities. It could be the skill of understanding another language or the desire to make art or music or the desire to help people or the ability to make friends. All of these things are wonderful to be passionate about learning and they often make our own lives better along with the people around us. They help us build communities of people that also have gifts because everyone has a gift and continue to grow and build with others. School could be one of those places, or maybe church, or maybe you've got another community, like dance class, or a community center, or a play group. All of these places are great for learning about your own gift and learning about other people and their gifts as well. Today, I want you to take the time to think about what your gift could be and about what the gifts of the people around you are. Maybe your sibling is great at making friends. Maybe your friend knows how to play the tuba beautifully. Maybe your parents and grandparents are passionate about helping in their communities. Think about it and see what you discover. Thank you. Friends, it seems like we have a, a lot of time to think lately. Again, if we're not at work or um, at play or shopping or doing whatever, we sometimes are at home, especially with COVID. We seem to be at home a lot. So um, it's a time for us to reflect on our lives, what we're doing and what maybe we need to do or haven't done. And sometimes we look for ways of transforming our lives so that we can be the person we want to be. So let us come before God in a prayer of transformation. Holy mystery, you have gifted the church through the goodness of your grace to be your hands and do your work, to be your voice and share your words, to bring healing to a fallen world and broken lives make whole. You've gifted your people with a blessing of your spirit, the power to transform lives and make all things new. Now may our hearts receive our mouths proclaim, our hands prepare for service, that the love that we have known might overflow the lives we live and pour into the hearts of others, that all might receive your grace, renew your spirit, rene your renewing spirit and your love. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm number 762, and we'll have Clark play through the music once, then we'll sing it once, and then we'll go into the responsive readings. Your steadfast love, O God, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains, O God. Your judgments are like the great deep, all living things you save. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. O people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, and your light do we see light. 
Continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright in heart. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, one of the letters that Paul wrote. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Friends, hear what the Spirit is saying to us this day. Thanks be to God. Well, today seems kind of dismal. You who are worshiping are online again. Only those leading worship and the tech team are here in the sanctuary. In the cold and bleakness of winter, our future once again seems really bleak, and things seem like they're starting to crumble again. It's sometimes hard to find God in our lives. Some of us may feel alone, detached, trapped indoors, and for many, it's absolutely depressing. When will this all end is the number one question many of us are feeling and asking. Some of us are ready to burst out of the house and just do something that we don't often get to do. Again, sadly, I won't be going on my warm winter holiday this year. Even though I like to think I'm a daring person, I don't want to take the chance of flying to another country and getting back in one piece or without something coming with me. But I'm luckier than many of you because I am still going to work, seeing some people, communicating in various ways, and having human contact. I suppose one of the things I need to remember, and maybe we all do, is the words of Psalm 36. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. God's love is steadfast. Even in these pandemic times, God's love for us is near and with us. We are not alone because we need to remember we live in God's world. <clears throat> we may not realize God's love is still with us in this time, but it is in quiet ways like the bird that sits outside your window singing to the world or the snow that gently falls on the ground offering a blanket of beauty to the earth. It may be the person who walks by your home and waves, or the gentle voice of a friend or family member who calls. God's love is in all of these things. So as we are again online only, groups not meeting, what can we do? This leads to Paul's letter in 1 Corinthians. Paul writes about spiritual gifts that inspire and reminds us that God is the source of our human gifts, which we are encouraged to honor, develop, and share. 
In our community of faith here, we need people with all types of gifts to bring wholeness and unity. There is a rich diversity, but not a hierarchy of the gifts. No one has a better gift than any other. All our gifts we offer are valued. I want to say today that God delights in these gifts that are within us all. Some of us may think we don't have spiritual gifts, but we all do. Sometimes we don't realize it. We often highlight people who offer gifts in worship or in organizing large activities or groups. Such gifts are vitally important to who we are. But what about the people who quietly offer a prayer for others in their homes? Or those who put up and took down all the Christmas decorations? Or what about those who tend the flower beds in the summer or clean the kitchen, buy the coffee supplies, or make the coffee on Sunday morning? Or what about those who used to read scripture, take up the offering, agreed at the door, straighten out the library, or work at the rummage sale? These gifts are vital to the church and the world's well-being. They are needed, and they are needed more than ever in this time of pandemic. Jesus reminds us that often the most important actions are not the prominent public acts, but those done silently and in private. And one way I think that is true about how we share our gifts within this community of faith. So I want to ask this morning, what gifts do you have that you share? So here's a little exercise for you, and I'm going to see how many of you actually do it. I want you to type a gift you have in the comment box. And in a moment, we'll read some of them out. I won't necessarily say who said it. And don't be shy, because I know you all have gifts to share. It may be listening to someone, or doing some dishes, or organizing a shelf in the church. It might be singing. It might be offering words of prayer. So, I know there's a time delay, so take some time and write down some of your gifts. And I'm going to look at my phone and find out what's going on. And we have nothing yet. They're being shy this morning. Ooh, here we have one. Baking. Good listener and problem solver. Floral arranging. Good listener. Ooh, ooh, these are good. Doing PowerPoint, yes. Friendliness, Shh, that's a good thing. Processing the collection or offering. Maybe these folks aren't as shy as I thought they were. Serving on a committee, that's important. Along with everything else, of making coffee and all that sort of stuff, because... When we don't have coffee in the church after Sunday morning, I'm sort of a little cranky. <laughs> what else do we have? Baking bread, yes. Taking minutes is important. Look at some of these gifts. They're just outstanding. Oops, I just lost my feed. One more second here and we'll move on. Well, that might be it for now, but thank you for sharing. When I wrote this sermon, I actually expected many of you not to answer or make a comment. So for those of you that did, why not? Are you shy? You don't want to expose yourself for the gifts you offer? Perhaps you're too humble. I don't want people to know what you actually do around here, because I know you, lots of people are doing things. That little exercise really doesn't matter for today, though. 
The importance of it was for you to think about what you have offered because I have another assignment for you. This is one that doesn't happen right now, though. Don't leave the worship service. It happens later or tomorrow, next week, or whenever you can. God gave you ears to hear, lips to speak, and eyes to see. Right? Yep, I can see you all nodding at the moment. And this assignment is done anonymously. You don't have to report it back to me. But I want you to use your heart to be God's heart. I want you to use your ears to be God's ears. I want you to use your lips to speak God's words of love, compassion, and hope. I want you to use your eyes to see each other in other ways. Over the next while, I want you to do something for God and myself. It's something that our pastoral care team has been doing for almost two years now. I want you to call someone. It could be those in the congregation. It could be someone outside the congregation, whoever you feel has a need to be called. Not someone that you always regularly talk to. Like Kathleen, you can't call me. Um, You have to find someone else. But I want you to call and say, Hi, I'm calling on behalf of Westminster United Church to see how you are doing in this latest wave of COVID. I want you to use the spiritual gifts that God has given you in faith to spread the love of Christ in this world. I want you to find out how people are doing in this moment in time, how they are feeling, and to assure them that the sacred presence is with them. Sounds hokey? Yeah, probably. But we are people of faith, and you know what they say about those people in the United Church, they are hokey. Sometimes we hide the gifts we have been given because we are afraid to use them, afraid to make them public, afraid that we'll be embarrassed if we did. But we shouldn't be. God didn't give you these gifts to hide or to misuse, but to get, gave them to you so that you may be able to bring light and hope to others. In the last few days, I, over this week, I've talked with a few people and I'm experiencing despair amongst us. I tell these folks not to be afraid to call me whenever they need to. But I can't do this alone. I'm not the only shepherd in this flock. You are all shepherds. And it's time, my friends, to tend to this flock and the flock outside of our doors. Remember the words of our opening hymn? To find the lost and lonely one, to feed the hungry children with warmth and good food, to bring hope to every task you do, to dance at a baby's new birth that might be alone, to make music in an old person's heart, and to sing to the colors of the earth. This hymn speaks to us of what scripture is calling us to do, calling us to use our spiritual gifts the God-given ones to help God's people, as God cannot do this alone. And remember these words of our prayer of transformation. And we can think as we do this for God. To be your hands and do your work, to be your voice and share your words, to bring healing to a fallen world and broken lives made whole. You have gifted your people with the blessing of your spirit, the power to transform lives and make all things new. May it be so. Amen. Let us join in singing this hymn I picked before we were not in in person, but Holy Spirit come into our lives. It's from More Voices number six.
Am I on now? Oh, sorry about that. I'm just saying that for you, of the, those of you that are at home, aren't you glad you are at home when we're singing these new songs because then no one hears what you're doing. I'm not, wasn't Mike during the hymn singing, I don't think, but Kathleen was. <laughs> and so if there's any faults today, it's yours, Kathleen. <laughs> so. Life is a blessing from the divine creator. As children of God, we are encouraged by the Spirit of the Divine One to share our talents, our skills, and our very being as we offer to the work of Christ Church some of the blessings we have received. Let us sing of that giving.
generous and loving God, we bring our gifts to you this morning, praying that both givers and gifts will be transformed by you. Amen. I think I missed the last line out of uh, that offering hymn. Sorry about that. Um, not sure where I put it. Anyways, let's, friends, join in uh, the prayers of the people. And today I'm, we will pray um, the Lord's Prayer. That is a version by uh, the Reverend John Hawes, who's now deceased and was the minister at Wesley United Church. So let us pray. Steadfast and caring God, on this day of winter, we gather once again online to worship. We know it's not ideal, but we're thankful for the gift of others who enabled this to happen. And we're thankful for, to the Spirit for gifting these folks. Through the Spirit, you have gifted each of us with gifts that we recognize and sometimes perhaps don't. And is all that you ask is that we use our gifts to bring hope, peace, and love into your world. We are thankful for the gifts of others, the gift to listen or to speak, the gift to offer help or reach out in compassion, the gift to do small tasks and the big ones, the gift to govern, and for those who work tirelessly for our communities and world. Enable us to see the gifts of ourselves that we sometimes don't see. Encourage us through your love of creation to share our gifts and not hoard them. Challenge us through others when we do not use our gifts wisely. Hear our prayers when we don't know how to use the gifts we have, not, have been given. We pray that the gifts of the Spirit will help others who hunger have no home, are marginalized, lonely, and grieving. We pray our gifts will encourage love and overcome racism and bigotry. We pray our gifts will mend hearts and lift spirits. We pray this in the name of Jesus as we pray the prayer John has adapted, saying together, On the street. We honor the presence of the holy in our midst. May the kingdom flourish among us. May we have only what we need each day, that all might have enough and more tomorrow. May we be as generous in offering forgiveness as we have been humbled and grateful in being forgiven. May we be strengthened through our trials, and may we face evil with courage, truth, and love. We pray in the way Jesus taught as we also walk in his way. Amen. Let, sorry, go ahead.
May the God of creation, of power, strength, and glory, bless us all as we go bravely to face the uncertainty of life, knowing full well that we do not venture out alone. Go with the blessing of God, the love of God, and with the Spirit. Amen. Thank you.